The Book of Jeremiah. The Book of Jeremiah. Chapter 2. The Book of Jeremiah. Chapter 2. The Prophet Jeremiah. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord. I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in the land not sown. Israel was holiness to the Lord, the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him will offend. Disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What injustice have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me and followed idols, and have become idolaters? Neither did they say, Where is the Lord, who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through, the la through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death, through, the, through a land that no one crossed, and where no one dwelt. I brought you into a bountiful country to eat its fruit and its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? And those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and walked the things that do not profit. Therefore I will yet bring charges against you, says the Lord. And against your children's children I will bring charges. For pass beyond the coast of Cyprus and see, send to Kedar and consider diligently and see if there has been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, which are not gods? But my people have changed their glory for what does not profit. Be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Amen. God, many years after his intervention in the people of Israel, in Egypt, when he freed them, he sees now the situation, now he's sad. He is sad, firstly, because he remembers how they started off, and secondly, because he sees how they have ended up. And this is a message today, my brethren, how easily a person of God can lose his way and end up being in a way that God can't even look at him, but only with sadness and complaint. I remember my favor upon you when I come near you. When I took you out of Egypt and freed you. When you followed me in a desolate place, a land not sown. What you saw was a desolate place and a land not sown, yes. And even all this, you followed me completely. And you, for me, you were a separated nation. A unique, special nation. My behavior toward you was special when you started. And even more so, you were the first fruits of my increase. How nice that God sees us when we are standing well. Jesus Christ says that Jesus Christ is the brightness of God. He is the best thing that God has to reveal throughout eternity as far as glory is concerned. But the Church of Christ also, I'll be bold enough to say, is the brightness of Christ's glory. Why do I say this? Because the Bible says the woman is the glory of the husband. That's how Christ sees us and his plans are good. His plans, God's plans for people are only blessings. 
if we knew, my brethren, what God is planning for each one of us, how more devoted we would be to Him and how closer we would be to Him. Of course, now God comes and says, Why, my child? Why? You were my people. You were the best thing I had. Whoever went against you, calamity came upon him because I was your defender. And now, he sees, and with sadness he says, What unrighteous deed did you see in me? What injustice have your fathers found in me that they have gone far from me? A complaint now. First, there was sadness, sorrow, and now this complaint. What did I have to do and I didn't do it and your fathers left me? They walked, they left the truth and they walked behind vanity. As a result, they were destroyed. And they did not care about me as to say, where is the one who brought us up out of the land of Egypt? But they did not think to say, where is the one who led us through the wilderness? through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death, through a land that no one crossed, and He brought us into a bountiful country that flowed with milk and honey, the land of promise, the land of blessings. You left us slaves from Egypt. You followed me with faith, and we passed through deserts, through pits, through a desolate land, through the shadow of death. And where did you reach? In the land of blessings, the land of the promise. That's where I led you, where milk and honey would flow. A land in which you didn't have to water, but from above, God watered your land. And your land is prosperous, rich, Protected, and you were protected. I defended you in my presence, in my blessings, in my land. And you defiled my land. You established my inheritance as an abomination. Remember, my brethren, Esau, who despised the birthrights. But it's not the same for Jacob, and that's a great difference. God loves Jacob always. And his children, God loves them always. And what is the difference that is waiting for them? Where he's waiting for them, he's waiting for them to come to their senses, he's waiting for them with his arms open, he's waiting for them to return so he can fall on them, kissing them giving them back the best robe, again, the ring of the promise, and to get the fatted calf and sacrifice it in his joy for his children. And here, we must be careful, my brethren, something which is very serious. And that's how God showed it to me. Christ promised to his disciples, your sorrow will turn to joy, and your joy will be complete. And I can do this, Christ says, no one else. But my sorrow can change into joy and my joy can be complete and you can do this. And just think, when man acts like that and Christ, bound by his word, acts like this, what will be the relationship of Christ with man. Christ who has intentions to bless and make man happy and the person, the man, who has intentions to do the God's will completely so Christ's joy can be full for this person. And that's a perfect blessing, my brethren. That's 
where complete blessings lie. When Christ strives to fill a man's life with joy, and when man from his side strives to fill Christ's presence with joy, in other words, not just sat in the Holy Spirit, that's complete and perfect blessings. That's where the relationship of man becomes, as the Bible says, a church which is perfect, holy, without blemish, without a wrinkle or anything like this. A church glorious, which Christ will come in rapture. To enter richly into the kingdom of heaven and to reign forever and ever with Christ, with a wage that's complete and with glory that's perfect. Here, I'd like to open a parenthesis. My question was, how can a person enter richly into the kingdom of heaven? God tells us, be careful, strive to enter richly through the gates into the kingdom of heaven. And my question is, what should I do? And the answer came from above. It wasn't not to sad in the Holy Spirit, but to make Christ happy. Happy. And when Christ is happy from you, because of you, your joy will be complete in Christ Jesus, not only here, but also throughout eternity. Amen. So my brethren, it is what we want in our relationship with Christ. And it's simple. Because what does a woman want from her husband? A woman wants from her husband nothing else but love, take care of her, do her favours. And what would this woman be happy? When she's holy, of course, not when she's wicked. And a man, what does he want from his wife? To love him, respect him, take care of him, take care of his family, not to sadden him. Of course, when the husband is holy. And then how will the family be? Perfect in the presence of God. Why? Because there's God's blessings in that family. There's God's blessings in that relationship. Just think now, if we extend this in our personal relationship with Christ, for me, to want Christ to be happy with me, and how will it be happy with me? Tell me, Lord, what you want me to do, I'll do it. Christ wants nothing else. Christ only wants us to love Him with all our hearts, our soul, our mind, our might. In other words, He is the one who loves me. He who does all my will. And the most important thing of all isn't this. The important thing of all is that when you make this decision, Christ knows that you cannot execute it. That's why He says, you won't do this, I will do it for you. I know that you can't. But I realize that you want to. If you want to, Learn this, that without me you can't do a thing, but with me you can do everything. And so, it's not the person who wants or wills, but everything comes from God. And a person, my brother, today, let's make this decision please. It's a very nice decision to make. In other words, when I realized this, my joy was complete. Lord, is it that easy? And even easier, God said to me, and forgive me, for saying this. Even more easier, yes. How? And this decision, I will put it in your heart. In other words, what will I do? You will glorify me only. Hallelujah. Is it that easy? And I was thinking how to do it. And I was making plans in my head how to pray, how to act, how to work, how to succeed, to enter richly. And Christ comes and says, It's very easy, my child. Because you won't do it, I will do it for you. Can you not but give glory to God? Can you not but say, Lord, glory to your holy name. We thank you. What kind of God are you? There's no other God like you. There is no other God which is love like you. But something more, which will make him even more happy. Can you in this decision make it not only for Christ, but for your brethren also. 
Now we're getting further on. In other words, not only not to sadden my brethren, but my life, my behavior, and my prayers, and my actions to make my brother, one by one and all together, happy. How Christ will be happy with me then. And how will I do this, Lord? Love one another as I have loved you. God knows it's hard. But Christ will do this for you also. This also, yes. Don't you want to extend love, wealth, and glory of God in your life? Look at your neighbors. Look at them well. Can you love them like you love yourself? Difficult. Christ can do this also, dear Lord. And do you want to extend even more your relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit? So, Christ will owe you a favor in your life. For Christ to come and say, I'm becoming your debtor. And I owe in your life to always give you a favor. Can you love your enemies? See those who speak badly about you. Can you bless them? You see those who hate you, can you pray for them and love them? Difficult. Christ can do this also. In continuation, Christ will come and rapture us. And how we enter richly through the gates, glorifying and glorified by Christ. Hallelujah. God has good plans for us, my brethren. God has a nice path for us to walk on. God has pre-appointed a future which is a complete blessings, but be careful. Because the people of Israel had all of these things and lost them. Two evils my people committed against me. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, firstly. And I'm thinking... How easy it is, I wonder, for man to forsake God. And the answer is very easy. Why? Because the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The heart of man is deceitful above all things. Deceit reigns in our hearts. And exceedingly wicked. Exceedingly wicked. And who changed the holy creation of God, the perfect creation of God that God made according to His likeness and image in this mess? The murderer from the beginning, the cunning one, the one deceived the whole world. And now, who will defend us? Christ do this also. Be careful, therefore. Let's be careful. Be careful of what? To keep watch. To pray. Pray what? Keep us, Lord. Protect us, Lord, so we'll never forsake the fountain of the living waters. Protect us. And protect us just in case our heart with our desires leads us to make holes in the ground, broken cisterns, to pour out our own water in there, to drink it from our own dirty waters. Because this is the devil. But the word of God is, go to the fountain of the living waters. How easy it is, very. The fountain is right next to you. The word of God, prayer, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, therefore, my brethren, we will acknowledge the grace of Christ. The grace of Christ, which is complete, full, perfect. There's no void doesn't lack a thing. God has prepared everything for a complete blessing. You know what I will say? For me, Lord, let's all say this. God has prepared everything for complete blessings. Everything. Make me worthy, Lord. Help me, dear Christ. And the great, I want it, Lord. Amen. Dear Christ.